As much as we would like to be in control of every aspect of our life, in many cases we find ourselves not in control. And in this case, it's the sun. And when the sun is not shining, I'm not able to capture electricity. So sometimes I find myself in a position where I need to find that electricity. In this case, I was able to find a spot called Patagonia Lake State Park. And while I was able to recharge my jackeries, it did not go as well as I had hoped it would. As you can tell, it's a pretty cloudy day. And whenever I come across several cloudy days in a row, I end up having to make a decision as to whether I'm gonna travel a considerable distance, try to get somewhere where there is more sunlight, or I need to find a place to plug in. That's exactly what I ended up doing uh, here, is I ended up finding a place where I can plug in. So I'm not in a hurry to get there. And I wanted to stop by this town, Bisbee, Arizona, because it is a very unique town in southeast Arizona um, referred to as Little San Francisco and in many ways it does remind me of San Francisco. Um, it's very unique in the way that they were able to incorporate geographically the um, housing in a way that doesn't destroy or, de or damage the uh, aesthetics of this mountainous area. I hope you enjoy. Anyway, I'm going to do the best I can to catch as much as I can going through this city. It is very, very tight. It does definitely remind me of, of uh, some of the cities that I've traveled through in Europe and and uh, and then again also having traveled through San Francisco several times. It's uh, kind of an interesting little trip. I'm going to really only narrate if I feel it necessary, but as you can see up on the hill the houses and we're going to actually end up in that area where those houses are and then come back down through the town and come back out basically it's the same way we came in a loop here in a second a hard right here in a second and uh, you can see these houses some of these places are actually built directly into the rock in fact there's a, a, a excavator right now that's uh, excavating some of the rock out to build a building next to an area that, that didn't have a building to start with. All right, so I'll make that hard right hand turn and swing up through here. And go up this hill to some of these houses that are at elevation or up in the elevation. And, and you can see off to the right there, houses and, and driveways and buildings that are either uh, shored up with uh, rock walls or they're just built directly into the rock. It's actually really cool. This is by far one of the most unique towns I've seen. Coming back down, Copper City is apparently a moniker they enjoy. Uh, Now is where it's going to get confusing because you've got to do like right, left, right, left, right to get out of here. Otherwise, I'm driving circles. But I was very impressed with this uh, with this city and the way that it's kind of built up. Rock stairs going up to houses. Houses built on the sides of the rocks. retaining walls, shoring it up. All right, so I do remember this. Can't go straight, gotta make a right. Looks like going through a parking lot. And... Now 
now down through an alley. Back out on the main street, basically where I where I turned initially, or should say went straight initially, and I could have actually turned, you know, gone down that main street instead of that alley, uh, but as a, you know, just not familiar with the town, thought it was pretty interesting to swing through here. Does that happen often? I thought it was it's kind of an inv invasion, but. Oh, okay. So I arrived at my campsite just a little bit before sunset, set up my camera, and then got my rig together in basically what I call camp mode, and uh, made dinner, took a few pics, and even though I'm not sponsored, I love my Lucy light. It is a uh, solar powered light, string of lights I should say, that um, with that uh, console sitting on the dashboard it's always getting charged and anytime I need light and it has three different brightness uh, anytime I need light I can just press the button and there it is it is a beautiful thing wouldn't mind being sponsored but I am not sponsored so once I got everything set up then I promptly locked myself out of my vehicle now I have AAA and I did call AAA but unfortunately, because it is such an isolated location, the Patagonia Volunteer Fire and Rescue had to come to my aid. Chief Ike and the two firefighters, Diane and Walker, ended up saving the day. So I've been meaning to get the, uh, the way that I locked myself out of the vehicle. Um, it was definitely an error on my part. It's not knowing the equipment, not knowing um, exactly how it worked and one thing that I didn't want to ever do was get locked out of my vehicle um, or, or for that matter to not have to use the alarm all the time in other words I wanted to be able to lock the vehicle and uh, and and not necessarily set the alarm but I didn't know exactly how it worked but I'm going to show you exactly what happened and how I locked myself out of my vehicle okay so because I normally keep my driver's door locked because I keep my computer and my camera equipment in that door. What I did was I came around and I had this door open and I left it open and this is where I normally keep my keys just kind of hanging in there so that they're not on my hip they're not in the way and with this door open I walked around and I had headphones in okay now that, that's important because you can actually hear the click and I didn't, I had never done it before because I know that whenever I come to this door, what I need to be able to do is I need to put the key in and then turn it to the right. And that's just a single click that unlocks this door. But what I did inadvertently was I turned the key to the left. Now, this is where it's gonna be kind of hard to hear, but I'm gonna try to put this mic over here by this door and see if I can hear it lock. Listen carefully. Now, I know that I heard that in my ear and I have headphones in. I don't know if the mic picked it up, but it was just a click, a distinct click locking the doors. 
Now with my headphones in, listening to my music, I didn't realize, and by the way, the awkwardness is that I'm holding the camera with my left hand and I've got my fuzzy cat, or is it dead cat? I can't remember. Anyway, my dead cat in my hand as well. So it's a little awkward. But anyway, what I did was I turned it to the left and then realized, oh, well, shoot, what I meant to do was unlock it. Then I unlocked it, did what I needed to do in my uh, vehicle on this side, and then I locked this door and then closed it. Now, what I didn't realize was that initial turn to the left, that click that you heard, was locking all of the other doors. And because I had this door open, I walked around, stuck my keys back inside, and then closed this door. Now, it wasn't uh, probably an hour later that I realized that whenever I went to open the door, they were locked, and I was locked out completely locked out now I've since put a, another key somewhere on this vehicle using bailing wire so if I ever did that again but now I know exactly how it works because I've used the mess with this key now this key is an ignition key but it's also it's not the same ignition key as the one that's in the ignition it does not require the chip so it works what I now know is that when you turn this to the right once it unlocks this door and twice it unlocks all of the doors so now i know that i'm not going to lock myself out doing the same thing i can put my key in there i can close that door this is now unlocked this is now unlocked and in fact i kind of need to remember that this has to be locked again to keep it secure, okay? But now it's locked. Okay. That's how I locked myself out. Operator headspace and timing. With that fiasco behind me, I was able to spend a little bit of time exploring Patagonia Lake State Park. Patagonia Lake State Park. This is the uh, swimming area and lots of kayaks and uh, canoes either launch from here or just on the other side of the uh, barrier or there's a launch right over there a place you can kind of drop in nobody's swimming today though it's uh, a little bit chilly a couple of ducks that's about it From the beach you've got a real nice copiously provided tables throughout for day use and a big parking area to my uh, left including that pavilion where they have events i saw a poster for one that was march 5th can't remember the uh, artist though basically a convenience store lakeside market but I didn't go in because I'm pretty sure it's really expensive. Dump station, and then a whole nother section of campers. Not around where I am, but closer to the beach. That is a boat in campsite. So there's some stairs just over here on the left that go up. And then right there is the uh, fire pit. There is a table kind of tucked in there somewhere. And then of course you can see the water as it comes in, but or it creates an inlet for you to anchor your boat and get out and camp. Jumping from cliffs so high, trusting our wings to fly. Sometimes we're crashing down, but we get up and start from the ground. Falling down 
down I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Underground old school, there's a shovel, can you dig it, fool? 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 Can you dig it, f